Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program Capital Beat. India Alliance in its first coordination committee meeting, which was held at Sharad Pawar's residence, came up with a list of 14 anchors whose programs will be boycotted by the India Alliance members. Now, if you remember, Malikarjun Kharge in Mumbai and the Bangalore meetings had stressed on the fact that India Bloc will come up with a strategy to counter the propagandist media. Now that this strategy has come into shape, and it's almost like more than three days, it's playing out as an ugly war between the pro-government channels and the anti-government channels. And of course, that includes the YouTube platforms. Now, where is this entire situation taking the media? Many people say that this is a much needed step which has come late. It should have been done long before. Many people feel that this is not a situation which should be warranted in a democratic setup like India's. Uh, uh, joining me now is uh, Mr. N. Ram, who's a veteran journalist, one of the most uh, senior most journalists in the country and also the director of the Hindu group of publications. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ram. And I was really wanting to talk to you on this issue. It's almost like more than three days since this uh, boycott call has uh, come up from the India Alliance. But my first uh, question to you is that where is this uh, taking the media from here on? Uh, is it going to create a separate, is another set of loyalist media? Or are we going to see a very serious kind of a segregation of media, which the country has not seen ever before? I think the news media are highly polarized. The bulk of uh, bulk of them, the at least the big players, uh, uh, clearly in the pocket of the government, or if not in the pocket of the government, tilting very heavily towards them for various complex reasons. Some do it for ideological reasons. Others do it out of the fear, out of fear. Others are intimidated, and so on. And uh, that's that's another matter. I personally think too much is being made of this. And on the big political stage, one could even contend that this is a diversion. Uh, uh, for, from issues that matter. But for media people like us, we need to discuss it. I, mm -hmm. I see. In fact, uh, I thought about it and I've had a conversation with uh, my friend Karan Tapar for The Wire. Uh, uh, he had very clear views on it and we sort of discussed it back and forth. I now have realized that this this is not really a question that calls for a professional or ethical deep dive. It is a, a practical and political question. That's the first point I, I would like to emphasize here. So there's no need to go into the ethics of it because uh, it's done. It's widespread, it's rampant. In fact, uh, quite a few political parties boycott uh, certain TV channels and or anchors but they don't, as a rule, they don't announce it. They don't announce it publicly. Hmm. Uh, I, for example, the BJP uh, boycotts all Tamil news channels. Yes. Good for them because they are not they can considered independent. They are not considered uh, servile or many many you know they can't be manipulated. It appears I'm talking about Tandi TV, Putia Talaimurai, and so on. Uh, the other day. I uh, two days ago, in fact, uh, we we had a meeting in my office, in the Hindu office, uh, on how to revive the Chennai Press Club, which has not had elections for many years, and it was quite a very constructive meeting. And there are a number of uh, uh, key journalists there, senior journalists like uh, Bhagavan Singh or Nakiran Gopal, and you, and young, younger journalists Kavita Murlidhar and many others. Very good, about a dozen people. So I used the occasion to poll them on this issue. And uh, without a, without exception, everyone said that India, the decision was right because they had watched these. By the way, let me say that I have, uh, I admire this, uh, uh, you know, it's a well-chosen list, whoever did it. Yes. A lot of research and technical uh, work has gone into the choice of this list because these are the people who, who are widely perceived by audiences uh, to be um, propagandists and Hindutva advocates uh, and often uh, very loud and even hate speech. 
because that's the reason given by the, the, the India Alliance or grouping for uh, uh, the decision to boycott uh, these anchors rather than the channels. That is, one is bias and the other is uh, 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 communalism. And then they don't want to be part of a hate narrative. Fair enough. Bias, you can't really complain by, about because uh, bias is inbuilt in journalism, into journalism. If you say that I'm biased or you're biased, that's no ground for uh, you know any sanctions. But if it is uh, extreme propaganda, loud propaganda, noise, obnoxious propaganda, and also verging on or actually being hate, hate speech, then I think it's a serious matter. And uh, it is the right of every political leader and party not to engage uh, with uh, anchors and journalists who indulge in this. Uh, so Mr. That, Ram, you, you initially uh, said... So I, I, uh, just one minute. In this huh. group, only one person said that maybe they shouldn't have announced it publicly, do it. Hmm. Otherwise, it was unanimous. And I, hmm. I want to, ref you know, that reflects a certain mood uh, about, about uh, how bad uh, our media scene has been, how ugly it has become. Right. In fact, uh, many people here in Delhi also have been saying that they shouldn't have announced it, but uh, they should have just done it. But uh, besides that point, what you initially said that this boycott apparently is a, is a practical and a political question. Now it's not about ethics. Yeah. So are we as journalists saying that uh, this is a step in the right direction and this was much needed? I don't say that. They could have handled it in a different way. Uh, it's well known that, uh, you know, uh, top political leaders, let, let's take uh, two examples. One is former Chief Minister Jayalalitha. Hmm. Tapa. He asked very hard questions uh, and uh, she didn't walk away. She didn't uh, leave the interview, unlike another person I'm going to mention uh, in a minute. But towards the end, uh, she made it very clear that this was a very, uh, uh, she didn't, it was very unpleasant for her. And when he said that, uh, I'm happy, thank you or something. And she said, no, no, she was not at all happy with uh, having to do this. The other example is Mr. Narendra Modi himself as chief minister of Gujarat. In Jayalalitha, I think it was 2005. For Mr. Modi, it was 2007. He virtually walked away after two and a half minutes when uh, Karan Tapar asked about uh, both, both uh, in both cases, it was Karan. He asked about... Uh, the uh, uh, the genocidal pogrom in Gujarat uh, for the first question, and he he then but then he he kept Karan there for a for a whole uh, hour and uh, said you're my friend and so on. That's another way of dealing with it. But in both cases, it was clear that they wouldn't know more after that. There's not, not been any occasion where uh, uh, Karan was able to interview either either of them after that. Yeah. So this is standard. This is done all the time. And uh, political parties, especially the BJP, uh, they avoid, uh, they boycott uh, the news channels. A notorious case was for NDTV when it was owned by the Roy's and managed by the Roy's. Uh, uh, and that I think uh, was clear, they, but they don't announce it. RSS people may go or other supporters of, the, of that political party may go, but uh, the leaders would not go. And this has been, uh, this has gone on for a long time. Therefore, therefore, this this is a practical question. What is the purpose of this decision to uh, to boycott these uh, anchors? And again, I repeat, well chosen. The list is well you know, well chosen uh, because they, they are the people who indulge in this. Uh, but, so, what is the purpose of it? And one of the answers that came from my group, my friends and colleagues who I mentioned earlier, uh, whom I met two days ago was it is to send a message, hmm. a political message, a strong message, the name and shame about what? About the Godi media, what they, what they call the Godi right. media. Right. Uh, uh, now, what is this message? And the second question then is, who does it hurt more? Does it hurt uh, the political leaders or party, their image, or does it hurt uh, the media? In some cases, I know, for example, in Kerala, uh, when uh, I think uh, there was tension between uh, the CPIM and uh, the Asia Net, uh, I think when they decided not to uh, 
participates and their representatives uh, uh, for any uh, any discussion on Asia Net. I think it hurt the, ch the channel much more. And then finally, they reached out. I, I learned this. They reached out to the leadership and some kind of amicable right. uh, solution was found. So this goes on all the time, which is why I say oh. it's a practical question. Yeah, it is a practical question. Indeed, I agree with you. But uh, the media scenario already was so polarized. And now you have a totally different kind of a debate altogether, maybe for divert to divert attention or not. We will not go into that because the most question here is about the DNA of media. Now, where do we see media? Now, the first question in that context only, I would like to ask you that here the difference is that BJP had not announced, but they had boycotted it. India Alliance officially has announced it and they have boycotted now. Now, is the is the is BJP or maybe the Godi anchors, whom you may call it, uh, are they feeling miffed about the, this fact that you know uh, India Alliance has is is having an upmanship because they have announced it and then they are making a, a politically moral high ground? Is this the reason of irritation on the part of the BJP spokespersons and also the the government supported channels? Yes, I th I, th I think you got a real point there. If they if they, if this becomes the main argument. And I, I do think it diverts attention for more serious issues on the big political stage. Although as media persons, we have to engage with it, uh, uh, you know, discuss this. Um, so was it the smartest thing to do? I don't think so. If you ask me a straight question, I don't think this is the smartest thing to do. You could have done the unless the purpose be, uh, this message goes from, and from what you say, the message has not gone through. Uh, in in favor of this because it's it's getting very ugly. You said very polarized, right. but Absolutely. the media and perfectly good journalists uh, have other views on it. They they think it's wrong. Some of them, right? Uh, uh, which is why I emphasize it is not, in my view, uh, a, a, a professional and ethical question, calling for a deep dive, but a practical and political question. Purely, if you like, you can say instrumentalist approach. What does right. it lead to? Absolutely. Uh, in uh, fact, uh, uh, yeah. the time demands that, you know, people like you, Mr. Ram, have to emphasize more and more on the fact that, you know, where is this media scenario heading to? Now, the first question which I asked you in this context was about announced and unannounced. Now, the next question is that it is also about my press freedom and your press freedom. Now, look at what uh, uh, this uh, news broadcasters and digital association uh, has just uh, deeply expressed their anguished and they are concerned why India has boycotted it. And they are talking about the press freedom. They are talking about the freedom of expression. And uh, the sequence of programs which I have been watching on the television channels in the last two, three days, they are becoming more and more heated up. They are into name calling. They are into name shaming, which was something which was so uh, unimaginable before. I mean, uh, you look at the YouTube platforms, which are anti-Modi. They are calling out the names of the anchors and then mounting up an entire program. Look at Sudhir Chaudhary. It looks very uh, unfair on my part to you know take names of those anchors. But since that list is out, now Sudhir yeah. Chaudhary on India Today, the day when this boycott call was made, on the next day, he does a huge one-hour program. And he says that, look, this is uh, an emergency era which has returned. It is the Congress uh, which has an emergency mindset. Now, he's more aggressive, more ballistic. And the same thing is happening on the other side as well. Say, for example, if you look at Ajit Anjum platform, which is very, very vocal, uh, uh, it's anti-government, and it's been into name calling uh, as far as the Godi anchors is concerned. Now, is it uh, some kind of a weird uh, uh, polarization which we are seeing? Yes, uh, that is very unfortunate. I, I hadn't uh, followed this. I didn't know about uh, uh, quite a, uh, you know some of this, but most of it, what is happening across the uh, in, in the media ecosystem and in the political uh, system, uh, if that is happening, then it, then that is very unfortunate, and that has suddenly diverted attention from more serious issues, um, and so on. This, uh, so I think, a much smarter thing to do would have been to just uh, do it without announcing it. And the other thing that uh, some people have suggested: why don't you boycott? Why don't you avoid going to that channel? Hmm. Because the channel creates these anchors. These anchors, I mean, in a sense, you're targeting just the individuals and not the uh, not the organization which uh, makes this possible. 
which is really accountable to it much more than these are. Because if if what they are doing is considered objectionable, sack them, get them out. Absolutely. In this, but they want them. And as uh, Karan Thapar and others have said, this, they play both sides. And he gave the example of, uh, of uh, India today having Shivarur and who's the other? Sudhir. Uh, Sudhir Chaudhary. Uh, and on the other side, on the secular side, he said Rajdeep Sardesai and Rahul Kamal. Rahul Kamal, so yes. They have it both ways uh, across the spectrum, spectrum, he said. So the yes. channel is getting away with it. They're getting getting the India in, India party representatives to come with, in, uh, with those anchors. So they're having it both ways. So the question, so who is it hurting more? Yeah. It's the question. Absolutely. And that's an important question you raised. But uh, I was, uh, you know, on one of the panel discussions yesterday on the same issue where uh, one of the Congress spokespersons uh, made a very interesting point. And I asked him specifically. So he says that, you know, it's not a boycott call, Neeluji. You should not call it a boycott. It is a satyagraha. Uh, meant to send out the message very, very clear that there is no place for hatred. There is no place for uh, communalism or, or a communal agenda. And he and he made point. He made his point very clearly. So would you agree with that? That, you know, let's not call it a boycott. Uh, it, it's it's like a satyagraha mounted by the India Alliance uh, members. Just quibbling. You can say satya. Yeah, it's, it, he's got a point in the sense you are if you, you take a stand against hate. But, but what is the difference between a boycott and a satyagraha? You just... You're giving an explanation for what this is. There's no difference. Hmm. It's a form of protest. You keep away, but you if you keep away, do it quietly. Hmm. Way, I, uh, that's standard okay, political practice. It's not just the BJP that's done it. There are other political... But the gentleman further emphasized it, saying that it's like a non-cooperation movement. So that's why he's calling it a satyagra. Then, then don't go to the channel. Yeah. You're, that's your fundamental right. Hmm. But uh, coming back to this uh, statement, I was uh, astonished and uh, incensed by the language used, completely over the top by uh, the news broadcasters and digital association. Yes. NBA. They say it's uh, deep, they're deeply anguished and concerned. They say it's a dangerous president. The, the ban on representatives, I don't think there's a ban on representatives. They all agreed. Uh, Betokens intolerance and imperils press freedom. How does an imperil press freedom? It may not be a smart move. You could have been more subtle about it, more thoughtful about it. But how does it imperil press freedom? Nobody has a right to, you know, you can't say that there's a right to, you know, they are an obligation to appear before these anchors. Hmm. There's no such thing. How does it, what's it got to do with press freedom? Claims to be the champion of pluralism and a free press. Uh, so uh, this, this this callous disregard for democracy's most fundamental tenet, the in inalienable right to openly express ideas and opinions. That's the only serious statement. You do not have an invariable, inalienable right to express hate, to do hate speech. I think we must make it absolutely clear. It's not mm. just ideas, you know, not any ideas and opinions. Right. Touching on hate. And then the worst part of the statement is takes the nation back to the emergency era. Emergency era, yes. What a ridiculous statement. Parroting what that's the government has statement, done. Mr. Ram, that's a statement which came from the BJP, BJP spokespersons the very day the list came out. That yes. was the time. And these channels then picked it up. But this is the official statement of the NBDA. Hmm. Issued. We have the statement here. Yes. Immediate release on yes. September 14th. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that statement, which you just sent it to me. But, uh, sir, is this uh, a wake-up call, not only for the anchors, but for the proprietors as well? Yes. Like, as, as what you, Karan, and also said, that, you know, it cuts both ways. One channel has a set of secular anchors. Once a, the same channel will have a more ballistic and communal anchors spreading hatred. So their agenda is very, very cut out. But... Uh, is it a wake-up call for the proprietors that stop doing this now? Yes, I think uh, there will be a lot of public resentment, and that again, the, the country is polarized on on you know com communalism versus this. It really, really, this is a very ugly situation politically speaking. But that situation may change at some point. 
and uh, these anchor these channels the proprietors as well as the anchors are going to face a lot of flack if Absolutely. they make it till then so it is a wake up call hmm. uh, for the, i think the particularly for the managers of these organizations uh, uh, and the owners they have to think about it seriously that is this the kind now let me say this i think we we have some of the worst news television in the world there must be others which in other languages are pretty bad but i tell people who come here that they're shocked by the noise uh, and so on but we have some of the worst we used to have intelligent uh, interviewers anchors and so on i don't want to name names we, we used to have good news television at least a part of it they they may still exist because i may not know about it in various indian languages i know about tamil there's some very good anchors there are people who are independent they have intelligent debates they field it on news television which may be one of the reasons why <laughs> the bjp anamalai and company have uh, decided to boycott them because they ask hard questions the current tapa like questions or your your kind of questions uh, you know uh, where you try to probe sometimes you play the devil's advocate Absolutely. you push hard you're not you don't have to be completely you know uh, uh, so polite as to be you know go along with what they say you can contest that's that's good uh, good interviewing anchoring and so on uh, so i don't know enough about it but uh, what i see and what i now i wouldn't use the word boycott but avoid seeing whole channels i don't uh, you know i never go there is some of the worst uh, the fox news type uh, you know content absolutely but uh, so it is a wake up call right it is a, a wake up call indeed but uh, uh, what i've heard you know from uh, the sources within the india alliance that apparently this is just a first step which they have taken the second step which probably they might announce or might not announce is what i'm hearing from the delhi political corridors of power is that they will try and uh, you know uh, start arm twisting the state media uh, as in the the, the non bjp government ruling states where uh, they will stop the advertising and that's when the real effect will start coming in now if that yeah. is a step which is being planned uh, how how do you really see that sir Oh, that will be terrible if it happens. It's already happening in, in, in uh, so far as advertising is concerned, it is happening. The major newspapers and so on. I don't want to go into any details because we are also uh, yes. affected by that. Not in the state, but it's from the center. But they do it, and uh, it's it's not uh, a level playing field so far as advertising is concerned. Some small newspapers get a lot of advertising uh, and so on, and we don't. And also, there are, by the, I hear about other kinds of support. uh financial support uh, not uh, not uh, not into accounts unaccounted money also going in in some cases uh, but so i think this it will be extremely unwise if there is a second list and you saw this cartoon yes i saw that <laughs> i saw that yeah yes. let's say it shows uh, i don't know who they are politics dot in and here is uh, prime minister modi consoling a man who's crying saying don't lose heart wait for the second list yes there is uh, the uh, home minister amit shah about to place a medal on a guy who's uh, bending so low right <laughs> recalling mr adwani's famous uh, statement uh, yeah, yeah, you know you about groveling uh, so uh, so there should not be a second list i hope there's no second so, list this uh, sad state of affairs sir, since you spoke about the prime minister and i i'm still reminded of those days because we were into uh, hardcore reporting when manmohan singh's uh, days which we have seen as prime minister every day on the prime time uh, news uh, there were discussions there were questions asked of uh, the manmohan singh government there were anchors and these very many anchors who are called the godi anchors they mounted questions against the manmohan singh government of that time we had all kinds of scams other scam commonwealth game scams uh, spectrum scam what not and uh, the government fell because of all these scams but there were questions asked of the prime minister but here when you start uh, talking about prime minister narendra modi he himself has given a boycott call 
how many interviews does he give? How many press conferences does he do? Is that not what a question which needs to be discussed at that point of time? The today, if India Alliance has given a boycott call, it was Prime Minister Narendra Modi who in 2014 or, or, or already decided that he needs to boycott certain sections of media who are not yeah, good. He... Yes, yes, sir. I have known Mr. Modi and uh, he, it's not that he was totally inaccessible when he was chief minister and even when he's prime minister. In fact, uh, a group from Tamil Nadu, we, we went to Delhi and we had a, a two-hour interaction with Prime Minister Modi, but it was off the record, although some people uh, wrote about it here or there. Uh, but uh, the decision not to give a press conference, including during the G20, mm. uh, and the Americans came out openly saying that it's India they, which objected to it. It's very unfortunate. Uh, and uh, earlier, when prime ministers and presidents or even vice presidents went abroad, there would be a media uh, group called a media delegation, which had some kind of official status accompanying on the same aircraft. And now, I don't know who goes, but certainly uh, representatives of major news organizations are not invited. Uh, and there's no interaction at all. Uh, on an official basis, as they should be. It happens in most democratic countries, it happens uh, that, uh, you know, the, the press goes maybe on a separate aircraft, uh, uh, or but they suddenly have a face-to-face -face interaction with the leader concerned, the president the pre or whatever, prime ministers and so on. Uh, so this is unfortunate. And Mr. Nada and Mr. Thakur have no business to criticize India because they do, they, they've given a, they, they, they ban their representatives from appearing. Say, I gave you the example of Tamil Nadu. Yes. And, uh, and when we were chatting earlier before this, you told me that it happens in other states as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. They, uh, so they, they do it. So they are, you know, double standards. And you can say it's being hypocritical attacking them if you're doing it yourself and you've been doing it for a long time. Uh, so it's very, uh, yeah. So they they have no credibility in criticizing uh, the India grouping. So you... but this entire scenario, uh, Mr. Ram, will it lead to a deeper credibility crisis with the media? Now, say for example, I'll give you one example of what I saw and what I've been seeing on television for the last two days. Now, uh, we, I mean, I'm talking about myself that I come from a school of thought of journalism where we were asked to respect the boundaries where we were asked not to, you know, uh, name and shame people. But now the scenario is totally different. Now, after this boycott call has made, now there is an anchor called, uh, I mean, I'm, I feel strange, but but since we are having a heart-to-heart -heart talk on this and it involves the state of media, so I think it's important to discuss this. There is an anchor on ABP, Sandeep Chaudhary, if you would be knowing him. He was yeah. with News 24. He left the News 24 channel. Now he's, jo he's joined ABP. But since that anchor was raising questions regarding price rise, regarding uh, unemployment, yeah. uh, BJP has boycotted his program perpetually. And uh, even after he's joined ABP, uh, BJP spokespersons have not been going on his program. So now the anti-Modi uh, uh, media or the, the, the YouTube uh, channels, they've started reporting on Sandeep Chaudhary that look, here is an anchor whose uh, programs have been boycotted by uh, BJP from since like time immemorial because he's one anchor who's been doing these programs consistently on farmers' issues, on unemployment, on price rise. This is one example. Now, the why, I'm, why I gave you this example was that, you know, this era of journalism where you take the names of anchors and you try and shame them that, look, if you are talking about, if India Alliance is talking about boycotting the anchors, BJP has already done it. Now, of course, I use the word that it's an ugly state of things, but uh, where is this leading to? Are we going to see it? Are we going to see a further degradation? Are we going to see a further uh, deepening of the credibility crisis? Yes, it may well happen. And good for this anchor, this uh, that he raises issues that matter. So mm. uh, all you know, more power to his uh, to his journalism, uh, wherever he comes from. I don't know his programs, but I've read about it uh, and what happened to him. Uh, so I think uh, yes, it it will lead to a further decline or degradation. Uh, but that reflects the political scenario in the country. But we don't need it in the media, the news media. They must be, you know, uh, no, this professional body should know better than to completely throw the line of the government on this. 
knowing, you know, they know that there are the, you know, boycotts by the BJP and some other political parties as well. Why are they being so one-sided? They but become... Don't you think that this is one of the worst examples uh, playing out before our eyes? Uh, you know, how media, once it becomes a pawn in the hands of the political class, uh, this is the state of affairs which it has to see. Yes, it is uh, very unfortunate. It is uh, ugly and we have rarely seen it before. Uh, this kind of polarization where, uh, you know, and, and, it, and it really tends to divert attention from uh, uh, from uh, bigger issues because traditionally the media, you know, you don't talk about ourselves in a... Uh, but do you think that India Alliance has, No, but India Alliance has done it deliberately to divert attention, you're saying? No, no. It, it may have played into the hands of hmm. these extremist forces, these extreme right-wing forces, the communal hmm. forces. Uh, and uh, it has to get back to, you know, this is unwanted. This right. thing, if it's really as bad as you say, because you've been following this uh, on the uh, the Hindi media, I don't, I don't follow mm. that. Uh, if it's really that bad, in in particularly in those areas, I don't see that happening in Tamil Nadu. Mm. It's not made much of a, you know, this is not this is not diverting attention from anything here, but. Uh, Based on what you said and uh, your observations, uh, it would be very, it's very unfortunate. They have not done it to divert attention, not at all. They have mm -hmm. done it to uh, focus attention on hate speech and communalism with good intentions. But was it a smart thing to do? I don't think so. If you remember the Mumbai meeting uh, of the India Alliance where Rahul Gandhi was addressing and some reporters asked him a question. So he said that, Ab aap ko bhi azadi milegi. means uh, press will uh, get its freedom. This is what he said in one of his addresses. I don't remember it clearly, but he did say that. And of course, Malikarjun Kharge also stressed the point that India Alliance will come up with a strategy to counter the propagandist media. Now, do you think that this boycott call uh, and you know this segregation of... Uh, government-supported media and the anti-government uh, media, is it going to play out as an election issue? Because obviously when these India Alliance partners will go out and they will tell the people that, look, we were not allowed to speak, media has not supported it, and Rahul Gandhi, time immemorial, has been saying that, you know, media has been captured. Is this going to become an election issue? I don't think it can become a big election issue. They may, uh, they may put it across as part of their... Uh, campaign against communalism and hate uh, and pro and propaganda, uh, misusing institutions and so on, which is certainly the case here. Uh, so, but to be fair to the uh, Congress, uh, after the emergency, and certainly after 1988, when Rajiv Gandhi, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi brought an ill-fated bill called the Defamation Bill to recriminalize the law of defamation, their track record in dealing with the press has been much better than the BJP's. Uh, oh. During the Bajpai years, they, of course, they didn't have a single majority on their own. Uh, it was not as bad as this either. But so far as the Congress is concerned, and particularly UPA during that period, whatever their faults, the Congress party specifically, the, you know, Prime Minister Manmohan, under Prime Minister Manmohan Singh's leadership and Congress President Sonia Gandhi's leadership, they were much more decent towards the press. I know it based on experience when they may have been very unhappy, for example, on the Indo-US nuclear deal with the stand that uh, we were taking in the Hindu and I personally was taking. But, uh, the, you know, the conduct, the uh, approach to editors and uh, other journalists, senior or junior, was perfectly acceptable. Yeah, I have, there's nothing uh, to fault uh, fault there. Uh, so there is, uh, I would say, a world of difference between the way the UPA uh, handled the uh, media, even though, as you mentioned earlier, some of it, the, the, Godi, the Godi media, uh, may, may, you know, gave them a hard time on occasions. Uh, consistently, Better at the state level, sometimes you faced uh, uh, unfair discrimination and so on. That's seen as part of the game because the media also play. You know, it's not that they are saints uh, in, in this respect. They look for favors, 
they go and ask for you know all kinds of things the particularly the proprietors or the even journalists so, uh, i'm so, sure uh, mr ram you would not so have missed, uh, so the that's my, yeah that's right. Uh, my last, uh, I'm coming towards the last lap of my questions that uh, I'm, I'm sure you would have seen the BBC documentary which was made. And in yeah. one of the interviews to a BBC reporter, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who then was the Chief Minister of Gujarat, he had said that, you know, one thing which he always regretted was that he was not able to manage media. Yeah. Now we... He's, he's doing it effectively. Yes. I mean, if you join the dots and look at the things which have happened to media in the last nine years, do you think that this was something Modi has been planning right from day one since he became the prime minister? And look uh, where media has reached. I think it was a remarkably candid thing to say. I, I, I noted that, what you mm -hmm. refer to now, that he has one regret. Yes, he made a mistake. Yes, he says. Yes. And that came from... <laughs> That was serious. I don't know if he could have imagined when he started that he could do all these things. He couldn't have been sure that uh, all these people would fall in line. I don't think nobody has that kind of foresight. But suddenly it has happened and this very effective management of much of the mainstream media and particularly uh, television. But uh, I... I I believe that we shouldn't get too dejected because uh, it's still very pluralistic and diverse, seen on the ground. India is so large and so diverse and even mixed up, if you like, that I don't think it's possible to manage or control the whole lot. And there are spaces and there are voices that stand up for journalism. And, no, no. Uh, uh, the uh, alternative so media definitely uh, is... Unlike, a... unlike the... the what we saw during the, uh, and, and people like me experienced during the emergency. Right. It's total, you know, you didn't have this technology, you didn't have this situation, complete control. And Absolutely. I don't buy these stories about some heroic figures and so on. None of that happened. There were some underground publications not uh, in those days. That was total control. Hmm. Total management didn't last very long. But uh, today, is that possible? I don't think so. So we shouldn't overestimate uh, Mr. Modi's or his government's uh, uh, capacity or competence in con managing and controlling the media because uh, there is resistance, there is dissent. Absolutely. And alternative media, languages. absolutely. What you're saying is right, that because alternative media is the answer to the mainstream media right now. But my final question to you is that, will it lead to some kind of a cleansing a moral cleansing of the media. Because uh, uh, I was speaking to a number of leaders within the India Alliance who said that, you know, we are not trying to boycott media in totality. It's just to send out a message. And as what I just quoted, that uh, Congress spokesperson who said that is some kind of a satyagraha, maybe that's the way they look at it. But is it finally going to lead to some kind of a cleansing? Will we see the good old days of media where fearlessly they were reporting, where fearlessly they were questioning the prime minister, where fearlessly they were putting out issues of the people. Because now it looks like a total polarization of people's media versus the power media, the the the, the government media. It looks like that. Yes, I, I think it is possible. We can't uh, guarantee it. But it is certainly possible that there will be some uh, deep thinking. There will be pressure on these people. If the political situation, especially if the political situation changes, and there could be in that sense some uh, internal changes and even cleansing, but it's not going to happen uh, uh, in a see. manner that uh, you know very quickly. Mm -hmm. It'll be a very uh, uneven process, uh, but that pressure must be exerted on the media uh, by uh, people, by thoughtful people, people who value democrat, you know, democracy free speech, but not hate speech. Right. But this... Uh, uh, by the way, very interesting, the Chief Justice of India's uh, observation, which I re just read in the press. On the media uh, trial. Uh, on the... Yeah, no, I was yeah. referring to the Editor's Guild saying that, mm. you know, even if they publish something that is wrong, you can't, uh, you know, it's not, uh, you can't prosecute them. Right. The words to that effect. Uh, it's only an observation, but I liked it. Uh, you know, you just uh, you know, it's uh, too often FIRs are filed the first information reports on something that is written or spoken or tweeted, 
or on Facebook or sent on posted on Facebook, and uh, we must bring an end to that. But uh, on on your question, I think uh, there is a possibility that at some point this will le lead to a cleansing effect. Right. But uh, uh, if you if you uh, uh, I I just had a point which which was just slipped my mind. But uh, if you talk about the cleansing exercise. Uh, it's it's also about the larger question of uh, you know whether uh, how many media persons will want that kind of a cleansing because will the proprietors want it will uh, the anchors want it who rose uh, who risen to prominence uh, that's also a question until unless there is a regime change of course so uh, until unless the regime changes the media situation will continue to remain the same Mr Ram. No, it could change. We are talking about possibilities and probability. Um, it won't happen easily. Uh, the uh, you know the, a lot of people are expressed concern, including uh, uh, reporters uh, without frontiers in their annual report about the concentration yes. of ownership in the Indian media, and even in, in the, some of the big language sectors. Uh, and today, some very big uh, corporates have acquired. Uh, acquired vast section segments of the media, particularly uh, broadcast media, television. Uh, uh, in the case of NDTV and also in the case of the you know the TV eighteen group, so they they have mentioned this in their report, and this is not good uh, when we talk about uh, the need for diversity and pluralism. So uh, it, it would in fact uh, parallel if you can assume that it will par parallel regime changes because uh, these groups will want to see it happen elsewhere. It's not just in India that, uh, you know, the Murdoch press and so on, they, they, they sort of go along with regimes. Sure. Uh, uh, so regime change is going to make a big difference, but uh, it's not a good thing so far as st structurally speaking. The diversity and pluralism, on, on top you have that, a very diverse situation, but... Uh, uh, and, and you know this tendency of monopolization of, mm. of concentration of ownership is going to militate against uh, media freedom absolutely and establish all all over the world the media monopoly by ben bagdikian i think uh, documents right. brilliantly uh, before the actually from before the internet age really uh, for uh, for the us uh, press uh, media uh, so Sama, it's ha happening in India to a significant extent. So my final question now to you is that uh, even if this boycott uh, call by the India Alliance looks like a half-baked step, but is it like some kind of a shake-up exercise for the media? Would you would you see this as a shake-up? And many more shake-ups like these would be required to bring back media to those good old days. I don't see it as a shake-up exercise because... Uh, but uh, it is a challenge. It is a problem. It is an occasion to think about it, what your role is. So I hope that happens uh, right. uh, in this. But to, we can't say that it is, uh, it's going to be a shake-up exercise uh, because there must be an intent on, uh, on both sides to, uh, to come closer and to resolve this issue. And the whole point of polarization is to keep Keep the situation polarized so that you, even for TRPs, you know, right. uh, uh, the, the whole uh, the whole idea. So I think uh, this is an opportunity. This is an occasion to talk about it, uh, talk about it seriously and intelligently, and to figure out what is right and what is wrong, what is smart and what is uh, what is not, what is wise and what is unwise. Uh, and in this case, I repeat, it is a practical question. It's a political question. For the media here to be uh, tackled, and not a question that requires an, a professional or ethical deep deep dive, especially an ethical deep dive. There's nothing right. unethical about it, in my view. Right. So certainly, it should be seen as a welcome uh, break for the media and time to introspect and uh, also time to think as to how they can improve themselves further in a polarized political atmosphere like this. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ram. It was a wonderful conversation with you. And uh, I look forward to many more conversations on media with you uh, in future as well. Thank you, sir, so much for joining. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.
subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more news and updates